Hey everyone, welcome back to The Rocketeer. Today I am going to review, build, and fly this kit by Composite Warehouse. It's called Formula 98. It is a fiberglass kit that comes in many different flavors like orange, raspberry, blueberry, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's all fiberglass and uh, really nice build. Looking forward to doing this. Now, the first thing you need to do when you purchase your kit is open it up and make sure that everything is there that's supposed to be in there, that everything fits the way it should, and make a note of things that you don't have, like shot cord, parachute, uh, hardware, things like that, because this kit does not come with any of that. So that's something that you need to keep in mind. Now, if you have some of these things, a parachute or whatever from a previous kit, that may save you some money, but uh, you just need to be aware of that. One thing you don't need to look for is the instructions, and that is because there aren't any. So this kit, this model is for advanced builders or people that have experience building rockets. You definitely do not want to start out with this. One thing it does come with, though, is a really nice sticker that says Formula 98. Yeah, that'll look really sharp on there. Okay, let's get the parts out, get it on the table, and take a look. The AV bay is all made out of fiberglass very solid here. The top and bottom lid are also made out of fiberglass and they have a ridge cut out of them for a better seal. The centering rings, uh, vent band, and fins are all fiberglass. The fins are really super sturdy. They have a, a little bit of abrasions on here, but uh, that's not really going to matter because they still need a bevel. They don't come with a bevel. You'll need to sand that and then they'll need to be painted. Now, when you sand fiberglass, Make sure that you wear a mask. It's 2021 and you shouldn't have any problem finding a mask. But you don't want to breathe in the dust from this. It's uh, very abrasive and it's bad for you. So just be careful when you do that. You'll also want to scuff up the centering ring so the epoxy will adhere to them. Anyways, everything's looking really good here. Let's take a look at the nose cone and the airframe. I checked the fins in the fin slot and they fit really well. Something that uh, makes me happy uh, because it's not fun to sand these out. However, a little sanding isn't a bad thing, but the fit was very good on this. And there is a 54 millimeter motor mount. I didn't mention that before, but uh, there's also another section of airframe here. So yeah, it's going to be a fairly tall rocket. Now, next thing I want to do is look at the nose cone because it's beautiful. The nose cone is made out of fiberglass with a metal tip on it. It, uh, it looks really nice. I measured it at over 23 inches tall. So yeah, it's pretty substantial. I am not going to paint the nose cone and I'm not going to paint the airframe. Now I may put a little bit of clear on it to protect it, but I want to keep that rich color right there. This is going to be a sharp looking rocket and really durable. Looking forward to this. The forward centering ring is complete. I made sure I put epoxy on the back of the nuts so they don't back out. One issue I found was after I sanded the motor tube so the epoxy would adhere to it, the centering ring was a little bit loose, kind of sloppy like. So how I fixed that, and I'll show you on the back end here, is I took blue painter's tape and wrapped it around, and then I took the centering ring and run it up over the blue painter's tape. I make sure that I left enough area here for super glue and what I did was I tacked the centering ring down with the super glue. I let it dry for a little bit and then I came back and I took a sharp knife or an X-Acto knife and trimmed the tape and peeled it off. Now the centering ring is secure and it's in the middle of the tube as it should be. Now you can come back with the epoxy and finish it up. Let's take a look at how I set up the altimeter bay or electronics bay, however you want to say it. I put a rotary switch on this side that goes to an Easy Mini altimeter on this side. I use JST connectors to wire everything together. Brass knurled knobs to attach my E-match, just a standard E-match, and 3D printed um, charge wells here. Now, the reason I didn't use the bulkheads that came with the kit, which are nice fiberglass bulkheads, is because I'm going to a modular system where I can pull this sled or even the whole unit out of the rocket and use it in another one. And that saves me time and money and setup. Um, so that's why I had a friend of mine, Jeremy, thank you Jeremy, great job, print these uh, pieces for me. Now it's really convenient like this if I need to use it 
in another rocket. It does come with, the kit does come with uh, this coupler here and uh, the vent band that I did use. And I attach to the payload bay with 1032 machine screws. And they just go through the payload bay and screw into there. On the other side of this, I have, uh, I don't know if you can see that in there, but I have a little bit of epoxy putty inside to uh, capture the nut. I wanted to share with you some of the modifications that I made to the nose cone. Typically, you would take the bulkhead and glue it into the nose cone, whatever depth you like. But I set it up so that this part, the forward bulkhead, will be removable and I can have access to the tip of the nose cone. Now, it has a really nice metal tip here and if it ever was damaged, I might want to change that if it came down hard on something. Also, there is a whole lot of space inside of here that's not really used and uh, I would like to have access to that. So it never hurts to gain a little space if you can. So what I've done is I have used some of that epoxy clay and I've captured some nuts on the top. I drilled a hole in the top of this and this one just has a minimal amount of teeth on it and I found that this type works the best. Also, I'd like to point out that you really need carbide bits if you need to uh, make some adjustments. Like on the top here, I made a little clearance for a couple of nuts because high speed steel, it just, the fiberglass just eats it up. So I find that these carbide bits are reasonably priced. I got this on, uh, I think it was on Amazon. And uh, they work really well. They stay sharp. Also, a small diamond bit like this ball, can you can use that to radius a uh, bolt uh, hole out or something like that. Uh, those are really handy too. And I find that the uh, diamond ball is not very aggressive. So if you just need to take off a little bit here and there, it works really well. Now to access this will be from the bottom here and uh, this coupler goes in the nose cone. So one thing I found out was that my screwdriver was not magnetic. So I used one of these magnetizers to magnetize the screwdriver and now it can capture the screw and I can fasten this down through the top. I found that to be quite handy. Also you can see that there is a hole in the middle because we need a vent hole when you push the coupler into the nose cone, that air has to go somewhere. And if you don't have uh, some sort of venting, you'll have a difficult time getting it in. I've also roughed up the outside edge so it will adhere properly. You have to leave a little bit of room uh, clearance for the epoxy because, well, it has to go somewhere. So this should be not a real tight fit, not really loose, but... Uh, my experience will show you that you just need a little bit of uh, room there to epoxy it in. Okay, so it goes in there like that. And uh, let's see if you can see the bottom of it there, sort of. Uh, yeah, kind of. Anyways, it's all set up. I'll just epoxy that together. And we're all set with this part. Hard to hold. 